Alrighty. This go round, we are going to be doing a systematic sampling. Last time we did a random sampling. This time we will do a systematic one, and we'll do this in new zones in Tanzania. So to get started, we're going to bring in the new zones. All right. Do the layer, add layer, add vector. All right, it's in this database, so already connected to it. Directory, open file geo database. Click add. Like I said, we'll do new Tanzania. Go ahead and add, I'm gonna close. This is what we got. So we got a bunch of these here. Again, we're not gonna do a systematic sampling for all of them. We're just gonna pick a couple that we're gonna, we're gonna use. All right, so when I zoom in, these are the ones that I'm going to be focused on. So I'm gonna do a selection square. I'll take that. And now let's save these as its own. Save selected. Change that to WGS84. And we'll do selected at Tanzania new, is what we'll call it. Click OK. I'll overwrite the current file. And now we have this new one. If I turn that off, we see we are only left with the selected. I'm going to go ahead and remove this so we don't have any issues. And all right, zoom in a little bit. So last time we did random sampling inside of this. This time we're going to create a grid of points and it'll take the bounding box of these features. So what we're gonna end up with is a grid of points and then we'll select all the ones that actually fall within the polygon. So I'm gonna type in here, I'm gonna type in fishnet, right? And we'll run create grid. So there's going to be a point grid. What bounding box do we want to use? We want to say, hey, take these values and put points inside of this box. And the box that we're using is the selected uh, Tanzania new. If we notice here, this is set to degrees. I don't want it to be degrees. I'm going to change it to this coordinate system, which will then allow us to do meters. And what I want to do is kilometers, and I want to do two. So basically we're going to put a point every two kilometers inside of this bounding box. When I run it, we get this, right? So it comes up to the very north, comes uh, to the west, to the east, in the south. We have it. And the next thing that we're gonna do is a selection because we don't wanna take any samples on the land or outside of these areas. So we're going to do a select by location and grab all the points that actually fall within the polygon. Vector research and select by location. I want to select the grid points that intersect with this polygon. Go ahead and run. And we'll see here, we have a bunch of yellow ones. When I click on that, right click, Go to open attribute table. If we look, we have a hundred selected. And I can do show selected features. Here are all the points that are selected. Oh. All right. Now I'm just going to right click and save these. So, so change that. And we have our systematic sample. Let's click OK. Overwrite the file. Now, let me turn those off. Here are the points. I'm going to get rid of the grid. Remove layer. And if we look here, we have all these points which are two kilometers apart, and it is done in a grid pattern. It is systematic. It's not just random points. Now, we're going to do some of the same workflows that we did in the previous one. I'm going to add in the XY location for these points and create a station ID for them so we can actually go out, collect the points, and then join them back up. Right. right click and go to attribute table. We got a lot of stuff in here. I'm going to turn on editing. Now the editing's turned on, I got some extra stuff here. So let's get rid of some of these because we don't really care about them. And same with the row index and column index. Uh, I'm not too worried about those. All right, now let's 
what we're going to do last time we did the ID, but if we look here, the ID is very random because these are just the points that fell within the polygon. There's no like pattern to which ones, whether it's when we start up in the corner, one all the way across, some fall in, some fall out. So the numbers are not sequential. What we're going to do is calculate field and we'll do a station ID. We'll do text and we'll do EBV plus. And we are going to do a row number. So like I said, if we did the ID, we, we would have EBV 418, EBV 555, which isn't, doesn't really make a lot of sense. So what we're going to do is just do the row number, which is the number over here. And we'll end up with a list of values all the way down to 100, because that's how many we had selected. Alrighty. So if you see right here, right, this is what the preview will look like for that one. Go ahead and click OK. And now we have all of those values listed out, EBB1 all the way down. Cool. Now let's add in those X and Ys. Do decimal, scroll down. Same repeat for Y. Okay, so we have all those points. I'm going to go ahead and save and then turn off the editing. Now that we have those, we have that. Click on identify and just take a look, right? So that is station 56. That is station 12, 28. All right, so we got a bunch of different stations here. Now, what we're going to do is, like we did last time, join them based off of that station number. So come back to layer, add layer, CSV, water quality parameters, add. This adds in is just that CSV with a bunch of information. Now we're going to join it by that station ID. Join attributes by field value. Input layer is going to be the water quality and Change that to, not that, sample points, there we go. Change this to station ID, give this a run. Again, we have 100, unjoined zero, so it worked, should be good. And I ended up with a table and not what I was looking for because I have some stuff selected, so we'll redo that. Let's just select all join all right the input layer we actually need to flip those there we go now we should be good and change that so we had the table as the input layer and that meant our output layer was going to be a table as well now that we have the input layer as the points and i've unselected everything we should be good to go give that a run all right 100 to zero we're good and now we have points instead of a table if we notice up here Turn those off. Let's just get rid of these. And we have these points. Let's open them up. The entry table. And here we go. Here are all the values. Here's the X, the Y's, the station IDs. They match up. And this is where you can just hide one. All right. So I don't actually want to see some of them. I can organize. We have the station ID in here twice because it joined from it. I can go ahead and just hide one of them. All right. That kind of cleans up the data a little bit. And then same as last time, I can go ahead and save this. I can make it permanent. And last time we did that, simple with values. This time we'll just add, add the TZ to it so we know where they're from. I can give that a save. And then now that is a shapefile that can be shared out, or we can do the same thing and save the features as a CSV and share it out that way. Cool.